Today I'll share three practical tips about how to become more efficient with hydroponics. And then a fourth tip that goes a lot deeper and I think could really change the way you think about hydroponics. Number one would be staggering your plantings. With traditional gardening, usually we're thinking of seasons. So planting season in the spring, harvest season in the fall. But a lot of that is driven by conditions. You plant in the spring when it's moist, when it's going to be warm for a long period of time. And then you're harvesting right before winter. With hydroponics, none of that applies because we're growing indoors and we don't have to follow the conditions of what's going on outside. I like to maintain a rhythm of planting and harvest continually. So each week I'll harvest a few plants and then I'll plant a few to replace those. And what I like about that is then I don't get into the situation where I have a giant harvest all at once and we can't eat the produce fast enough before it goes bad. But then also we have a continual supply all the time. So anytime we need produce, we always have some fresh and some available. And that relates to my second tip, which is have a system where you can go from seed to harvest all in the same hydroponic system. I like to be able to, like I said, harvest plants each week, but then put in new seeds into the same system. And then those plants can germinate, grow and mature all in the same system. I don't have to keep up a separate system. Um, I don't have to keep up a separate light. I don't have to remember to water the seedlings. It's just simple and I really like that. My third tip is to choose the right plants for your system. This has a couple different aspects to it. First one would be choosing the right kinds of plants that will fit into the system you have. So I found if you grow really large plants in a rail system, for example, that usually doesn't work well. They're either tipping over or they're spending a lot of energy growing leaves and you have to get things just right. So having more compact plants, especially in an indoor system, makes it a lot more productive. But then the other part of choosing the right plants is choosing the right varieties once you have the kind picked out. And I found that having higher quality seed and quality varieties go a long way to the type of produce and the results you get with hydroponics. For example, with lettuce, I found that there are certain varieties that grow really well and they taste really good. And they're not very picky about the conditions, so they grow really quickly and um, don't require a lot of upkeep. There are other varieties that they're either really picky about the lighting or picky about the temperature and humidity or the nutrients, and they're really hard to keep them looking nice or they just take up a lot of space, they kind of sprawl out and they'd be better suited to growing outdoors. So I found choosing the right seed makes a big difference in the yield that you get. So my fourth tip, which is by far the most important and really drives the other ones that I talked about, is focus on what matters. This may sound obvious, but if you really dive into what I mean, I think it could change the way that you think about hydroponics. With hydroponics and a lot of other things in life, I found that there are a few actions you can take that drive a majority of the results. So if you think about the 80-20 rule where 80% of results come from 20% of actions, I've definitely found that to be true with hydroponics. The trick of course is figuring out what are the 20% of actions that are going to drive 80% of the results. With hydroponics, there are so many little aspects to it, so many little details that you can tweak or things you could add or subtract or try differently that I think it can become overwhelming and it can be really easy to get stuck doing things that aren't going to drive results. So then you can easily get carried away working on things that ultimately aren't going to help your plants grow all that much faster or all that much better. Or even worse, you could start to look at hydroponics, see all these different aspects of it and get overwhelmed and say it's not worth it or it's too challenging. But I found that as I focus on the aspects of hydroponics that really drive results, put my energy towards those and put the other things more on the back burner, not only does it make hydroponics more productive, but it also makes it a lot more fun. So one fun example of this, when I first started with hydroponics, I ended up not putting a lot of effort towards measuring or controlling pH. I sort of just ignored it. I was more focused on how do I build it build the right system, get it set up so that my plants can thrive in the system that they're in. And even with that, kind of ignoring pH, which a lot of people would say is a terrible idea, 
I still grew a ton of produce and it worked out really well for me. Now, it's not to say I would recommend that you go and ignore pH, but I think what it shows is that if I thought the only way to succeed with hydroponics was to measure my pH every single hour and have it just perfect, I may have never started with hydroponics and may have never gotten this far at all. So just starting out, trying some things, seeing what are the real drivers of results and what makes hydroponics fun for you, I think is the most important thing to focus on. Now there's a lot I could talk about at this point about what I have found to be drivers of success with hydroponics, but I'll just give you one for now. The most important I found is having the right system, choosing the right system, building it, and getting it set up. And to help you out, I've created a free guide that goes through all the steps of how to build a hydroponic system like I use and then get it all set up. And so you can check that out on my website. I'll also leave a link down in the description.